in the last session, I introduced you the concept of dispersion uh, by using some mathematical expressions. Uh, in this session, I want to show you a so-called dispersion diagram uh, because the mathematical expressions could sometimes become uh, very difficult. But if you plot it on x, y uh, axis, then the discussion can be uh, uh, much simplified. So uh, the definition of the uh, phase velocity is given by this expression, which is just the uh, ratio of omega to beta. And again, the definition of the group velocity is the, given by this expression. Uh, you take a partial derivative of the frequency with respect to uh, the propagation constant. Suppose that uh, uh, for some cases, you can plot uh, a diagram called omega beta diagram. Uh, the vertical axis is the frequency of the wave. And the uh, horizontal axis is the propagation constant. And uh, uh, on this uh, curve, uh, you can specify your operation point. For example, for this point, uh, it means that um, if you set the frequency of your wave to be this omega zero frequency, then uh, you can find the propagation constant uh, beta zero to be this value. So uh, at different point, uh, you will be able to uh, find out the details uh, of the uh, propagation of the wave at different frequencies. Uh, if we uh, just pay attention to this the operation point, then if we connect this point uh, all the way to the origin and the slope of this curve, in fact, is just the ratio of omega over beta. So the slope of this curve uh, will give you the phase velocity uh, if you operate uh, your wave at this frequency. And uh, this wave will also have a, a propagation constant equal to beta zero. Uh, but if you look at this the definition of groove velocity, uh, d omega over d beta is nothing more than the tangent of uh, this curve at this point. So if you uh, just uh, calculate the tangent of this curve at this point, immediately you'll get a uh, groove velocity. So this is how you find the phase velocity and groove velocity on a diagram called omega beta diagram. And this diagram is called a uh, dispersion diagram. And uh, on the next few pages, I'm going to give you a few real examples. For example, um, you have learned about uh, Prisma uh, before, and we propagate a wave into Prisma. Uh, need to have a frequency higher than the uh, Prisma frequency. And the dispersion relationship is given by this. Um, this is the uh, vacuum uh, uh, k uh, multiplying with a term, which is a square root of 1 minus omega p square over omega square. And we said that uh, to propagate, to have a real value of this propagation constant, uh, we need to have a frequency larger than this omega p, and this omega p is called the plasma frequency. So if I plot this uh, uh, omega beta relationship on this diagram, uh, again, the vertical axis is the frequency of the wave, and the horizontal axis is the propagation constant beta. Then you will end up having this curve right here. And it properly uh, tells you that the, the frequency has to be larger than a certain value omega p uh, to have this curve. So this omega p is also called the cutoff frequency. Uh, for this wave uh, to propagate inside the prisma. And now let's choose uh, one operation point on it and try to understand it. But uh, you can see that the, the tendency of this curve is going uh, along this the red line. And uh, that is because when you set this frequency to infinite, this term goes away. Uh, this omega p over omega will become zero if you set this omega uh, equal to infinite. So uh, at infinite frequency, uh, the blue curve is going to approach this red curve. Uh, and for example, let's set one operation point right here. Uh, at frequency omega zero, there will be a corresponding uh, propagation constant beta zero here. And uh, just like uh, on the last page, we'll start to calculate the slope uh, connecting uh, uh, this point with the origin and also the uh, tangent of the, uh, uh, this curve 
uh, right at this point. Before we do that, let's uh, try to simplify this discussion by defining uh, N, a uh, capital N, to be equal to this term. And we call this the uh, Prisma Refracting Index. And the definition will uh, simplify the expression quite a bit. So let's just take it for now, uh, define this the square root uh, term to be equal to capital N. And then you can uh, connect this point to this origin. And then the slope of this the, uh, line is going to give you the face velocity. Turn out that uh, the calculation is going to give you a, a vacuum speed of light divided by this n value. And this n value is the, uh, in general less than 1. So you can see that the, the face velocity uh, of a wave inside prisma can be larger than the speed of light because n uh, is less than 1 uh, in this expression. And if you calculate the tangent of the, this curve right at this operation point, then you end up having a value equal to the vacuum speed of light multiplying with n. And this is the groove velocity of the wave propagating inside prisma. And because this n uh, is less than 1, so you will be expecting that the, the groove velocity uh, of a wave inside prisma is going to be less than vacuum speed of light. And so this uh, result uh, does not violate the Einstein's uh, uh, spatial relativity theory. And the second example I want to show you is the uh, wave propagation inside a waveguide. And I told you the, in the last session that um, the origin of the dispersion uh, could come from material uh, could also come from uh, a structure. So think about you have a circular wave guy like this and you propagate the wave inside. And apparently your electric field is going to be a function of the transverse coordinate. But the wave will be propagating along z direction. So this electric field phaser properly describes the field uh, inside uh, this wave guy. And uh, this the R uh, transverse, uh, this symbol uh, uh, represents uh, some coordinates uh, relevant to x, y, uh, r, and phi. And uh, the propagation is along z direction. So we lump all the transverse coordinates into this symbol. Then uh, let's the, put this phase of field into Hamilton's equation. And uh, you will come up with this uh, expression with some algebra. So it uh, turned out that um, uh, this uh, Laplacian only applied to the transverse coordinate. And uh, then you have a k square minus beta square right here. Let's define this k square minus beta square to be equal to h square. So you can write down this dispersion relationship like this. And from this uh, relationship, you can see that uh, this omega and beta are not going to be uh, linearly uh, related to each other. And h is related to uh, the uh, structure, uh, especially the transverse dimension of the structure. And we'll be talking about this when we introduce wave guy. But for now, uh, we have this dispersion relationship. And we can plot that on this omega beta diagram. And uh, so the, uh, if you just uh, uh, take, for example, uh, omega equal to square root of this divided by mu epsilon, then you will be able to uh, plot uh, this curve. Well, similar to the dispersion relationship in prisma, uh, you need to have a, a cut uh, frequency higher than this cut off frequency uh, to propagate a wave inside. And uh, now, uh, if we look at this the, uh, curve at high frequencies, uh, this plot is going to go to zero. So uh, at high frequency, this the wave is going to propagate uh, similar to a wave propagating in free space. Uh, because this term goes away, uh, you go back to the linear relationship between beta and omega. And so the, uh, the blue curve is going to approach this the straight uh, uh, red line. And let's choose one operation point right here. Uh, and at this point, the frequency is omega 0. Then you can find out the corresponding uh, uh, propagation constant beta 0 here. 
and uh, let's connect this dot to the origin and calculate the slope of this line. Uh, this calculation will give you the face velocity. And uh, if you go through the algebra, you're going to see that um, this face velocity is going to be equal to the free space uh, propagation speed divided by n, and this n is the defined uh, by this the square root of the one minus uh, this the square term here. And in general, this n uh, is less than one. So again, the phase velocity can be a value larger than speed of light. And to calculate the uh, groove velocity, you uh, uh, take the tangent of the, uh, this line at this point. And this calculation will give you a value equal to c. Uh, c is the speed of the uh, radiation in free space, multiplying with this n value. And this n value, again, is less than 1. So this the groove velocity will be less than the speed of the radiation in the free space. And uh, again, this is the uh, energy propagation speed. So the, uh, you will never exceed the speed of light. 所以呢,在这个小节里头,我介绍了什么叫做 dispersion uh, diagram,基本上就是把这个波的这个传输呢,在一个戒指里头,或者是在一个结构里头,然后画出它的omega beta diagram,然后呢,这个线在这个图里头呢,告诉你这个波在这个戒指或者是在这个结构里头怎么跑。譬如说,我们选一个点, 那这个点呢会告诉你说,在这个频率的时候,它的propagation constant会是多少。那在这个图很容易的可以看出来,就是这个波在这个操作点呢,它的像素度跟群速度是多少。譬如说,它的像素度,这个操作点的像素度呢,会等于这条线,也就是连接这个点到这个原点的地方的这条线